You're watching the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Salah to settle it! In front of the COP! Hi guys, welcome back to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Good to have you back on the channel, Mr. Ben Spaulding. Thank you very much. Uh, joining okay. me today. Third or fourth COP TV appearance? Yeah, now? it was probably hat trick. I'll, I'll grab a ball later. That one yeah. looks good over there. Well, Two right. Trent one. Yeah, so lovely. that's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> no um, yeah, listen, great to have you back on the channel. Thank what you. a week it has been for you, yeah. my friend. He's literally just come oh, straight yeah. from Marseille to the studio. Essentially, so. yeah. Hopped off a plane last night, stayed around in London, then, yeah, straight here. It's been non stop, but yeah, probably one of the best weeks of my life listen like, man I, I i'm i'm happy for you that you get to Thank experience you. that your first ever away day yeah. in europe uh, and what a day it was 2-2 two, two draw so mm. you're you're definitely feeling a little bit more confident than you were last week after yes. that horrendous result yeah at aston Probably villa still not as confident because the first half against marseille was pretty shaky um and if we're doing that against liverpool you can definitely punish us more than marseille could so was dunk drunk yeah, he could have been, yeah. He definitely could have been. He might have had a few beers on the plane over. A couple of shandies. Like we did, but yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not as confident going into this Liverpool game as I have been in the past three meetings because it seemed to get the better of you every time we've been together. Yeah, well, I've got sure. some stats that back that up, actually. Um, I don't know why I've asked you on for a preview because <laughs> yeah, every time I do, you win. But um, we have yes. a Trossard now, though. So you no Trossard, yeah. but it is return of the Mach. Return Ali Mach. After a great week from the Mache family. Yeah. Uh, Rem to smash that like button. Make sure you comment with your lineup predictions, thought predictions, score predictions, however you want to phrase it. Let us know how you're feeling in the comments below and then subscribe to the Cop TV if you haven't already. This close to 37,000, so let's try and do it. Thank you. Um, right. As we know, Brighton did win this game 3-0 uh, in the Premier League last year. The Seagulls have never beaten the Reds in consecutive league games, though. Uh, and this is their now 29th meeting. But as you mentioned, Liverpool won their first six Premier League matches against Brighton from 2017 to 2020. But then it all changed. In the last three seasons, the Reds have only just one league win against the Seagulls in five, drawing three, losing two. Um... Brighton have won five of their seven Premier League games this season. The two losses, though, that's what I want to talk to you about um, to start off with. It was a 6-1 uh, loss at Aston Villa last time out. And then, of course, uh, you did lose to West Ham at home as well. Mm -hmm. Sum up for me Brighton's start to the season. There's obviously been some massive, um, massively impressive moments. But are you worried at all about maybe a little bit of complacency creeping in or, or what how can you explain those two losses uh west ham one i would I, I would pin that on a freak result um to be fair they played they played very well tactically set up brilliantly by david moyes hit us on the counter scored i think with every shot almost um <laughs> just one of them games a bit like when we lost 5-1 to everton the previous right. season that was a that freak, was a freak result. result so oh. I, I pinned that west ham one as another freak result not going to happen again um, then Villa away, we never do well at Villa Park. I said to myself a couple of seasons ago when we lost 2-0 there, I'll never go back, hate it. It's harder to get out that stadium than it is at the Amex. And if people that go to the Amex, they'll know that's I've terrible. been to Villa Park. It was, <laughs> yeah, Villa oh, Park to be is, fair, I was in the whole end. But oh, Jesus. I almost play. got my kicked and in. That I, was 2013. We hate playing Villa. So I knew that was going to be a loss going into it, not 6-1. That was yeah, awful. That's, but that's I wouldn't, big. I wouldn't pin our issues on complacency. I would pin it on the rotation that we're having to do now. Our spine keeps changing every single match, as well as the keeper. Serbi earlier in the season said we're going to have two number ones this season. Um, Arteta decided to copy him with the right. <laughs> who got their first? first? Yeah, man. who got their first? Serbi, of course. Um, or Mario? Who? Mario. Oh, of course, yeah, yes. Honestly, mate. It's true. Every single, I don't know if you saw my Twitter, but Norwegian TV picked him up, yeah. celebrating at the end. They said, blah, 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 Serbi. It's so whenever someone says a, Deserbi, a I say Mario. On the screen. Yeah. Unbelievable uh, how how. But yeah, our spine our spine keeps changing. Like we had centre mids are different. We had a, a lad that start. Oh my god, sorry. He had a, he had a lad that started. Um, Hinshaw Wood is like first ever Premier League game with Gilmore against uh, a Villa, and it just didn't didn't, didn't work, work at all. Centre back pairing keeps changing, um, and yeah, the goalkeepers keep changing as well. It's been a bit. That's I think that's what's down to the rotation. Uh, when Brighton play in the Premier League this season, there are goals they've produced. Whether it's for or against them, the most goals in or out of any team this season with 33, 19 for and 14 against. Only Arsenal in 9, 10, and United in 2002 and City in 2020 have seen more wow. goals in their opening seven games in a Premier League. And season. on the flip side, I think we've conceded the last 14 games, which is Oof. pretty poor. <laughs> no clean sheet in four. 
14. Yeah, something like that, something mental. But then another good stat for us in our favour is in the league, we haven't lost back-to-back -back games since October 2022. And the only team to better that is Pep's City, which they lost in 2018, okay. which is a very good stat for us. Because, yeah, we haven't had back-to-back -back losses in the league. But this one could be the one where it changes, I think. Well, let's get into it. I mean, for Liverpool, um, in terms of injuries, Gakpo is still obviously out. Um, we know that Jota is not available. We know Jones isn't available. Thiago is out till the after the international break, which I heard of, uh, before the last international break. It just mm. keeps going on with him. I don't know what's going on there. But uh, I think he's had a reaction to his hip surgery. But, um, yeah, this, this one... We're going to play as strong a team as we can possibly play because this game is an absolute must win. Consider when we unjustfully had our 17 game run unbeaten streak taken yeah. away from us last week or we were gifting it to the opposition. I won't even say who they are. <laughs> um, how do you see Liverpool coming into this one? Again, I was at the game on Thursday night at Anfield. A nice win, clean yeah. sheet, two goals, did the job. How are you viewing Liverpool right now as a, as a Brighton definite, fan? Definite favourites for this one. Um, I mean, I, when every time I've watched Liverpool, they've looked good. Yeah. Looked pretty impressive going forward. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty concerned that we are going to lose this game. I'll probably go into that thinking that Liverpool are going to be winning this one just because it's now, you know, it used to be Pep Roulette as the FPL curse. I think Deserby, you never know who he's going to pick now. Mm. Um, it does change it up a lot. And that it? makes it harder as a Brighton fan to know what to expect uh, going into it. When you have stability in the same back four that plays week in, week out that Brighton fans are normally used to, you know, kind of know what you're going to get and you can change the attackers here and there and you kind of expect to get a good result. But you, we never know who's going to be playing in defence or in that midfield mm. now. And it's, it's been difficult. But what, what I will say, Pascal Gross returned from injury against Marseille and we already looked a lot better with him back in the team. He's so Some underrated. Player. Some Criminally player. Criminally underrated him. in the Premier League. Signed him for like three million pounds and he's, I think, got the... Only De Bruyne has got the more Premier League assists of current Premier League yeah. players in the league. He's been phenomenal. We need to get a statue of him outside the Amex. Next to a statue of Gross. You yeah, heard it here first me. on the he Cop will, TV. Be there. Um, right, let's talk about how Liverpool line up. You mentioned that Brighton changed things a lot. We're going to have to this week because, again, I mentioned Jones is going to be out who has started most games for us this season, if not all. Of course. Um, obviously, no Jota. Um, so let's try and guess who Liverpool are going to go with. Alisson will be in goal. It will be Trent back at right back. Um, it will be Canate, I think, uh, and, and, and Van Dijk. It's rare that sometimes Matip comes in, but it's rare that he plays two in a row mm -hmm. because we have got Canate and Matip. We can you know, swap around and make uh, necessary changes. Left back will be Robertson. In the midfield is where you might see an Endo or a Gravenberg. Um, really good game from What's Ryan. What's Endo been like? Do you know what? He's done almost exactly what I thought he is able of, which mm. is just being a destroyer. Against um, <laughs> sure, yeah. Leicester in the cup last week, I was at that game and he was brilliant. He cut everything out. He's got a him. ping on him as well. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm only joking. Um, Leicester, but he's obviously. definitely got some kind of warrior dog in him mm, in terms good. of you know relentlessly chasing after every ball he doesn't let you really breathe but again does he have the same legs that Ryan Gravenberg has got mm -hmm. we see how he uh, was gliding around the pitch the other night scored his first goal for the club and was really good it was between him and Jota for man of the match so just for this one I'm going to pip uh, Gravenberg with McAllister and Soboslai as we mentioned, return of the Mac. Midfield. It is. Um, and then obviously up front, it will be Diaz. It will be Nunez because there is no Gakpo as well injured after the Tottenham game. And then Salah. I think that's what that's we'll a, go with. That's a pretty good team. It's not that's bad very, considering very we team. got two red cards last week and an injury. Yeah. Um, but we'll take it. In terms of a score prediction, you're not confident. No. Um, I mean... I think we still played really well against Tottenham, which is the mad thing. Yeah. You know, Even we Tottenham, held yeah. on. I was just about to say we could play for another hour and they wouldn't score still. Mm. And they didn't, technically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was but right. Um, give me a score prediction for this one. Sunday, two o'clock kickoff, down on the south coast, mm. Brighton. We always, we always score, but we have been shipping a lot of goals. So it's going to pay me to say, but I think 3 1 Liverpool. <sighs> I've got my score back. I would bang rip on your recently. hand off for that. I've like, I said 2 2 against Marseille and then a couple of Brighton results recently have got them bang on. Okay, so well, that's let's hope to go uh, you carry on. Um, <laughs> yeah, for your sake, yeah. 3 1. Let us know what you think to that one in the comments. I'll go for. May I'll take a 2 1. Mm. I'd, I'd just We need to kind of forget about what happened in the league last week and go and win this game. International break straight after. So really important that we do that. Um, it's more for me. It's like. Again, going back to the goalkeeper situation, Jason Steele 
Bart Verbruggen, who's a very up and coming goalkeeper, still has they have similar qualities, but still is a better better with his ball with the ball, uh, ball at his feet, playing out the back. Bart can still do that, but still definitely better at that. Uh, whereas Bart's probably a better shot stopper. I think yeah. one of the goals against Marseille, it literally went through Jason Steele. And then three days prior to that, four days prior to that, he shipped six against Villa. A lot of them probably down to his poor goalkeeper, I would have to say. So, the, yeah, what's he conceded? Eight goals in his last two games. Um, but for some reason, I still think he'll probably play against Liverpool to deal with the way you'll probably try and press us when we're trying to play out the back. I think that he brings Bart in when they're more of a aerial threat, uh, like, like a Newcastle or like a West Ham. That's where he has played. So, yeah, I, th I imagine it'll probably be Steele again, but I don't know. I wouldn't, I'd rather see Bart just simply because of the Jason Steele's recent form. Yeah. Um, Jao Pedro, happy with him up front? Yeah, I am. I, I mean, do. you've well, got options, Probably, probably not as a number Ferguson nine. As well. That's the issue where right. he hasn't really performed too well as a nine. Came on as a 10 against Marseille. And whenever he's, whenever he's played as a 10 behind the strike, he's always done well. I think that's his good position. Um, when he played as a nine against Athens, he was... He was just taken out of the game so much by their physicality and that sort of thing. So he can play on the winger as a 10. I'm happy with him there. Danny Welbeck, he could, I don't know if you saw the match, but there was an opportunity where he could have yeah, swear to Fatty. Yeah, I did see that. Why is he not doing Fatty that? Fatty as well. Oh, yeah, Fatty as scored well. Scored last week. That? Uh, good start Could have him. scored against Marseille, up, but for a brilliant save from their keeper. When when's he ever made a save like that? But against Brighton, of course. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Attacking wise, I'm happy with whoever he plays. It's more of like the goalkeeper and defensive side that's going to be the issue. Does there be one year now as a seagull happy? Oh, we couldn't, could not have expected. I could not have expected this. Question. When Potter left, obviously, we, we thought we were going down. It was all doom and gloom, but we would never expected to have qualified for Europe in that season. We thought we were potentially going to do it under Potter. And then when he went, yeah, we thought it was the end of the world. But yeah, could not be happier for Deserby. Um, and honestly, Deserby being the manager of Brighton has actually inadvertently boosted views on the Cop TV. Is it? Oh, of course, yeah, of course it has. Because yeah, because honestly, like, it, like, I'm on Twitter now. If I type in Deserby Anfield, it's just, what is Deserby? <laughs> John Henry himself. John Henry. <laughs> Uh, what is Zerbi doing at Anfield? And then there's just people in the comments going, oh no, it's Cop TV. Oh, so God. great promotion for me. <laughs> yeah, you know, Zerbi, keep it coming. Also, not for um, Sunday though. Kari Matoma signed a new contract with Brighton, 80 grand a week now, um, which is a bit of a weird one because he hasn't really been doing too well recently, but for two goals against Bournemouth, he's had a good 20 minutes there or whatever. Um, I expect him to go to a City or Liverpool and that would do unbelievable views for your channel if you've got Gary Matoma. Let me put it, let me put that. Whoa, here. listen. Some of the Brighton channels that do like the match day vlogs get insane views when he scores, so. Yeah, because they that. do Karen the titles goes, in like Japanese. And no, you don't even have to do that. Just do all the, how you've been doing it and yeah, the, the, the views will come. That's mad. Because yeah. when uh, I think we beat United 5-0, I did the titles in Arabic, Salah hat trick. Oh, wow. It just went off, mate. <laughs> I know how to play the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, big up to Ben for coming on. Like I said, probably third or fourth appearance on the Cop TV. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on. You and Maz doing great things at Sport Bible as well. Thank you very much. Really happy for you that you managed to get a, a European away trip in. Yeah. Hopefully it's the first of many until we see you in the final in Dublin. And then <laughs> obviously it's good. a different story. But we will um, be there. We will be there and uh, we'll be here for you tomorrow after the game. Let us know your thoughts, your predictions for this one. It's a massive game. It's a must win. It's a three-pointer and it's the return of the Mach. How will Alexis McAllister do against his old team? You'll find out tomorrow. Ben, top man. Thank you very much. See you much. soon, brother. Cheers. All the best. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the Cop TV. The voice of, of football's, football's most, most famous, famous stand. stand.